Thank you. The first thing which seems to be fundamental is to be accepting that change is taking place in front of our eyes and change of an historical nature. I must say I agree completely uh, with uh, Professor Neil Ferguson when uh, a few minutes ago in his plenary he said that the world had entered a new phase which in some ways, he didn't use the words, but I will, can be called the post-Western world in the sense that for the first time in many centuries, and one could disagree when uh, this period is starting, the West no longer defines the agenda of the world. The West no longer has a monopoly for models. The West, European West initially, American West then, is no longer alone in the world. And the first thing is to accept change not to be in denial of this profound reality. To some extent, I think the Americans are in the middle of the road. President Obama speaks very ably, eloquently, of multilateralism, but he does not yet accept to describe the world as multipolar. And uh, it may be for deep cultural reasons, it may be for deep political reasons, but the debate on decline in America should be open. There is a relative decline of the United States. When Professor Ferguson speaks of disintegration of Europe, uh, I'm very sad when I hear that but I probably would agree with it. And the Europeans are not in denial of the climb. I would say it is just the reverse. It is as if they were looking with envy or with satisfaction with the prospect of becoming irrelevant. When you ask Germans what is the country uh, they are dreaming of, 73% of them are immediately saying Switzerland, Geneva on the Rhine. It's not a call for ambition. So the first thing is to recognize uh, that change has come and to accept it. The second thing of the agenda is to understand the nature of change. Understand the nature of change means witnessing the uh, re-emergence of China as a leading power. It's not an emerging power. It is a re-emerging power. This is why the Chinese are so confident in themselves. They back to where they were. This is what they have in mind. And they are taking with them a lot of other emerging countries, which in their case as emerging, are emerging. In the case of the Arab Spring, I again agree with Neil Ferguson, one should not use the word Arab Spring, which is too much dominated by comparison with the West, the West in 1848, or the Central European West in 1989. But one should use the word Arab revolutions, revolutions with an S. It is a fundamental change that is taking place in front of our eyes. And in order to understand it, we probably should go back to the French Revolution, the matrix of all revolution. And it means that we have to take a long and strategic view. If this is the equivalent for the Arab world of what the French Revolution was for Europe, we are in December 1789. The process 
has just started. And it means that we have to understand that the complexity, the instability of what it would mean. There's a great French story of the French Revolution, Albert Sorel, who described the dilemma of Austria confronted with the French Revolution. On the one hand, Austria was pleased because the French Revolution was uh, occupying France. On the other hand, Austria was displeased because uh, the very idea of the French Revolution was unsettling the principle of the monarchies of the Ancien Regime. Well, in a way, Israel today is in the exact opposite position of Austria. The principle on which these revolutions are based should please Israel. They're not going to be alone one day um, as a democracy in the Middle East. The values which are promoted by some of the revolutionaries are values which are very much values that should be shared by Israelis. But at the same time, it's unsettling because uh, Egypt is no longer led uh, by Mubarak and other countries will be confronted with greater instability in the months and the years to come. So if we have to realize, accept change, understand change, we must adjust to change. And this is my conclusion very quickly. I think the West has to reinvent itself in a post-Western world. And that means changing completely our attitude vis-à-vis -vis ourselves and our attitude vis-à-vis -vis the other. For the last decades, we have been living well beyond our means materially and well below our means spiritually and intellectually. For the last decades, we've been demonstrating arrogance towards the other and complacency vis-à-vis -vis ourselves. As of today, we must be much more modest vis-à-vis -vis others and much more ambitious vis-à-vis -vis ourselves because our uh, ultimate cards, specific cards, in this new world are in the realm of ideas and ideas. For the first time you see powers coming to the forefront really without any universal values, without any universal model. That's it. It's the end.